thank you all so much for coming and thank you so, so much to the Internet Archive, especially Brewster and Caitlin for organizing this. I'm, I'm so glad that we can do it here. I think it, um, it's a really, um, I don't know, fitting location to hold this in and I really appreciate that we can use the venue. I'm going to give a brief overview of, of AI safety and, you know, it's really uh, just barely scratching the surface also here. It won't be exhaustive and I will probably have forgotten some really important work. <laughs> Uh, but whatever I do mention can be found on the Existential Hope Index. So um, AI safety, I think in a nutshell, really is about reducing risks posed by AI, especially powerful AI, artificial general intelligence and super intelligence. And uh, there are many other definitions floating around. Um, for example, one of friendly AI, which was coined by Yukowski, but um, not, so, not used that much anymore. What, what is often used these days is also AI alignment. Um, which is now often used by MIUI and OpenAI to describe a super intelligence that produces good outcomes that are aligned with human goals. And then there's also the concept of beneficial AI, which is often used by Future of Life Institute and Stuart Russell to describe an AI that is beneficial to society. And as always, those three don't overlap perfectly. There are many different there are many differences in ways that people are using the terms, and some might argue that AI, AI alignment is a subsection of AI safety, and that's all okay, but those terms are floating around. And I think all of those are really kind of, you know, um, determined of avoiding scenarios like those <laughs> um, that um, you might remember from Fantasia, right? Um, it originated in uh, Goethe's Sorcerer's Apprentice, um, where Mickey uh, succumbs um, entities to help him do a certain task without knowing, um, without knowing the spell to, to redirect this and loses control. The only difference, of course, being in our scenario of AI safety that um, our brooms that we kind of succumb to help us clean um, are intelligent um, and that there's no master that can save us, right? It's really us and so we have to get it right. In terms of AI safety, there are four main focus areas into ethics, technical alignment, cybersecurity, and social coordination. And I think the ethical part, number one, answers the questions of what is it that we'd like um, AI systems to do. Then the second part can be broken down and kind of like how do we actually align those, um, those AIs with those goals? So how can we communicate this um, in a way that is understandable? Um, and then the third one is uh, uh, kind of answers like, all right, well, su su suppose that we, can, that we can communicate the values that we agree on miraculously. Um, what, how can we make sure that the underlying architecture of the AI is such that it actually reliably executes what we communicate to it? And then number four, social coordination kind of assumes that one, two, three take a lot of time and are really hard problems to solve. Um, so we better have some coordination amongst the players that are involved in this. Um, and usually one is often subsumed under two, so ethics and technical alignment are often be, um, treated as the same thing. Um, but I think it, it might be instructive to, to, to tear them apart. And if you're interested in um, kind of a whole overview of the field, um, I gave a talk about this at uh, South by Southwest recently. The talk is entitled AI Philosophy, Why It's Hard and State of the Art. And um, it can be found at bit.ly AI Philosophy. Um, I just, yesterday, um, I think it was uploaded to YouTube. Um, and I'm also link linking to it from the index. We won't have time to tackle all of this today. It's a, it's a really broad field. But I'm hoping that you, know, we, you can keep in mind that those are the different problem domains that we're talking about, potentially, or at least in the traditional field. And how do the different definitions that we come up with today and the different definitions of um, corporate, um, corporate intelligence fit on those fields? Um, but ultimately, I think um, it's important to know that you know, AI safety is only about artifi artificial systems, or I think at least in the sense that they are intelligent, right? It's not their artificiality that we care about as much as their intelligence. So I think it's really important to get the definition of intelligence right. And um, there's many definitions floating out here as well, but one that Luke Muhlhäuser brought forth, which uh, I think many AI safety researchers would agree with, um, defines intelligence as optimization power divided by resources used. And this kind of combines the idea that intelligence measures um, an agent's ability to achieve goals with the idea that um, it should use resources efficiently to do that. And you might want to contrast this with different definitions, for example, the one that we bring forth in our paper um, and that Mark Miller has been advocating for, for a while already, which basically says that it's about problem-solving capacity given resources. <laughs> so this 
kind of this um, concept is different in the sense that rather than trying, you know, rather than focusing on optimizing something, it suggests that, uh, which would suggest that an optimum is possible, we suggest kind of that intelligence is about solving problems, and so about this kind of depessimizing state almost. And while the first description or the first definition kind of almost seems to imply a kind of agent that can optimize a certain utility function, um, the problem solving definition um, is potentially much more inclusive of different types of ecosystems. And, you know, as I said, how one exactly defines intelligence will have an impact on how one thinks um, about different levels of intelligence and about the different entities that would count as intelligent. So here, you know, you can kind of make the case that there are different levels and different entities that we can map onto those levels. And um, there are many different kind of types of descriptions out there, but I think in a nutshell, they can be usefully broken down in um, narrower intelligence in the sense that as, if a system per performs well at a very narrowly defined task, a useful example for this might be AlphaGo. Um, because it, w it was very good, even superhuman, um, at playing a game, right? But terrible at other games, let alone more general tasks. However, now its successor, Alpha Zero, as you know, um, could learn many different games, right, um, from scratch. So this is really clearly a move away for me from narrow intelligence. Um, then, and it's a move toward general intelligence. Um, general intelligence in a way that I think states or usually um, is often state, uh, stated in like pop science as kind of a system that could successfully perform any intellectual task that a human can. Um, but there are voices, for example, like Kevin Kelly has argued um, that human level intelligence is actually really not very general. Um, so regardless of whether you agree with this or not, maybe a less like anthropomorphic um, or anthropocentric definition would you know, classify um, intelligence as the efficient, um, cross-domain optimization. Um, or as Ben Goetze likes to say, um, the ability to achieve complex goals in different environments using limited computational resources. So it's really this ability to kind of transfer learning um, from one domain to other domains. And I think then where it gets really interesting and where you know, um, there are many different um, kind of definitions that are inter interplaying is if you move above that in the sense that um, you have superhuman general intelligence. And um, this is general intelligence that surpasses the human level, right? And which is by many often already defined as um, a weak form of superintelligence. For example, Bostrom states um, about this that um, it's an any intelligence that is smarter than the best human brains in practically every field. Even though this is more like a, like a layer in between, if you then have the last lev level of like a rapidly improving superintelligence, which is this kind of like runaway AI, in, in the sense that um, this one is really kind of the strong definition of in which an intelligence Im improves exponentially, for example, by self-improvement or even by recursive self-improvement. Um, and traditionally, this is really the idea that an AI would help construct even better versions of themselves um, via self-learning, and this might get lead either to like a linear succession of just smart AIs, but if they were actually able to improve their ability to improve themselves, um, then each step um, would really yield exponentially more uh, improvements than the one before. So those are a lot of different levels of intelligence, I think, um, and there might be even more finer um, definitions. But I think what's interesting then is if you ask, well, okay, what kind of entities can we map onto those definitions of intelligences, right? So we already know now um, that we want to include more than human humans as intelligent beings. Um, that's, why we're, uh, that's why we're meeting here today, right? That's where we're tackling the issue of AI at all. Um, but where do we draw the line, if ever? So how do we ensure that our de definition of intelligence isn't kind of anthropocentrically biased, but it's also restrictive enough that it makes sense to talk about the concept? And as humans, it really took us a while, right, to include non-human animals um, as even on the spectrum of intelligence. Um, if, if, if ever, really. Um, and we've just recently really woken up um, to the fact um, that silicon-based entities might be on that spectrum as well. And um, I think today we're, we're really more about investig investigating even broader concepts of intelligence, for example, like teams, corporations, civilizations. But then the question, of course, becomes where do you draw the line? What about, for example, evolution? What about different biospheres? What about planets? How can we say that um, you know, we stop at corporations or civilizations but don't want to include those entities? 
Um, and I think because this is a really co complicated field, I made this um, map. <laughs> so um, this, uh, it also looks like quite a mouthful, but I hope that maybe we can keep it on um, later during the session if it helps for. Anyways, I'm plotting intelligence here um, with narrow general super, super human general intelligence and rapidly improving um, super intelligence. And then on the x-axis, kind of the entities, uh, the different types of entities that I went through. So um, I think what's interesting here is that it's sometimes really hard to plot this for me because the exact wording is very different, and this is really just my best guess. I'm sure that there is um, that there might be different uh, that we might want to move different uh, names into different categories, but here I focus on Bostrom, whose writings many of you know, then Mark Miller, um, which includes the position that Christine Peters and I are holding as well, and then um, Brewster. Uh, sorry, and then. Uh, the last one is the position of Peter, um, who wrote the, the literature review, and I'm really just trying to took the best guess as what they think about it. It does not include Brewster Kale's position yet, and it does not include Mark Nitzberg's position yet. This is because I'm not familiar, like sufficiently familiar to do this kind of graphing for them. However, I do hope that during the day, you know, maybe you can like say a few words about why you think, you know, it's in one and not in the other, and maybe we can map you onto that um, section too and move move around <laughs> between those different fields. So I think first what's interesting here is that you can see that most people or like most researchers really agree that on the first three columns, right, that agree that most non-human animals um, are narrow, current AI is narrow, um, and then that humans are some, some, in some way general, apart from Kevin Kelly who, is, who thinks um, they are narrow in that regard. Um, and perhaps even Mark under a different definition, but we're gonna to get to that. And I think where it gets really interesting here is then this yellow box, right? So first of all, drawing this up, I kind of real, it kind of reassured me that holding this meeting is actually important because there is sufficient disagreement in that field that it's really important to talk about it. Um, and secondly, I think um, it, it, it's just really interesting to, 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 to see how different definitions le lead you to, to draw a different conclusion, right? For example, Nick Bostrom, who classifies teams, corporations, and civilizations um, all as narrow. He has this definition in, he, in which he uses the word intellect to describe his superintelligence. So he says that um, this would include any digital computer or even an ensemble of network computers um, and cultural cortical tissue <laughs> um, or what have you, but it would really kind of exclude entities such as companies or the scientific community at large because they are not intellects, and also there are many fields in which they perform much worse than humans at solving problems. Um, for example, you can't have a real world conversation with the scientific community, that's his argument. Um, and you know, so that's why he comes out there, right? It's pretty, um, pretty, pretty, pretty easy to map, but on the other hand, if you look at kind of the definition that Mark Miller um, came up with quite a while back now is, you know, if you kind of consider the intelligence of, of a whole ecosystem, and if you consider it as the problem-solving capacity of an ecosystem, you get an, a definition that is much broader, really, in the sense that, um, you know, for example, if you take examples of an ecosystem of fish, you know, could solve a certain narrow set of problems. For example, the set that, such as converting light into chemical energy, but an ecosystem containing an intelligent person would solve a much different and a much broader set of problems than that ecosystem con containing the fish. And an ecosystem containing a whole civilization with access to fish and intelligent people would be even able to solve a vastly greater range of problems. So we'll talk about the specific definitions more um, in the sessions that, are, that I have with him later. Um, but you know, this is just to explain why he comes out as a, in this rather radical in, in relation to the others as like I'm counting most of those entities as super intelligences. And if you compare Peter and Mark, um, and you know, Peter will give his, give his presentation in a little bit, but um, he really says that corporations are general intelligences but not super intelligences. Um, and defining super intelligences here in a way um, really where it involves this half, a hard definition of self-improvement. And while Mark, Christine, and I say that super intelligences are, are that corporations are super intelligences um, in the strong sense that they're actually getting exponentially more intelligence, and so are, corp and so are civilizations too. So there is some dif disagreement, but what's interesting to note is that Mark and Peter would certainly agree that corporations are general intelligences. So at least because Mark already thinks they're, they're super intelligences, they would also agree um, on this part. 
So I think it's important to keep those kind of like, you know, definitions um, in mind and to try to disentangle really what are we actually talking about here. Um, an interesting point that we're going to probably discuss later is that, you know, in terms of the biosphere, um, in terms of whether to classify those as intelligent or not, Mark um, would probably not be even on this map. Um, just because he's thinking that it doesn't really make sense to talk about um, problem or to compare um, the AIs that we are worried about with the um, AIs or with intelligences such as biospheres. Even though they might be problem solving, they're just not problem solving in a way that is um, potentially um, uh, dangerous to us in, in the sense that it can lead to our extinction in the same way that those others can. So um, I think those are really interesting to keep in mind. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that this chart, which you know, I really just drew together, as you can see, um, will become much clearer during the day. And I'm happy to also put it into the index, if that helps. Um, and yeah, the main point here really is that there's often subtle differences. Um, and we should really try to be, be as clear as possible and not assume that um, others have the same definitions as we have. So really, let's aim for clarity here. Um, Let's try to evaluate what those definitions um, in the different areas mean and um, try to see what they imply for the different um, kind of subfields of AI safety. Um, okay, with that being said, let's start the day. Thank you.